Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves to hear the word of God as it comes to us in the reading of Holy Scripture. reading from the book of Amos. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground, they hate the one who reproves in the gate, Oops. and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain. You have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy at the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as I've said. Hate evil and love good and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. The word of the Lord. Let's read together Psalm 90 found in your bulletin. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? 
Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning, so we shall rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the treasures of days inflicted us. In the years in which may your servants, your works, and your splendor to your children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. A reading from the letter to Hebrews. The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing until it divides soul from spirit, joints from marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And before him no creatures are hidden, but all are naked and laid bare to the eyes of the one whom he must render an account. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help him in the time of need. The word of the Lord.
the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I missed being with you all last week, but thank you. We got to go to Flagler College for our first parents' weekend. Um, we also then brought Morgan home. She went through her procedures successfully on Thursday. She's doing great, um, and she'll be home resting this week, and hopefully by Friday, then Shane will take her back to college. So just, I know you're all going to ask, so to stop the queue at the door, I'm just telling you, she's doing awesome. But we did go to church on Sunday. We went to Trinity Episcopal Church in St. Augustine, which is the church Morgan has chosen for her college uh, place of worship, and we were glad of that. So together we went, and I loved it. They had big signs out, and they have a whole sermon series, the way they do it there. For October, it says, the things you didn't want Jesus to say. And I thought, how appropriate. Because if you'll recall, last Sunday, Jesus was talking with the leaders of the synagogue about divorce. Yeah, that's always a tough one. The pastor, the priest there did a good job, I thought, on the sermon. I'm just like, hey, I didn't have to do it. <laughs> but I still got a toughie, didn't I? Because if we really pay attention to everything that Jesus just said here, according to Mark, we really don't want to hear this either. I mean, most of us can get the commandments and yell like, check, 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 that's not me either, I'm all good. Yeah, we'll come back to that. But then, give all your things away? Ooh, I don't think I really want to do that. Um, for the sake of the gospel, with persecution? No, I don't want to hear that either. So it's a tough one this morning, but we're going to try to tackle it, okay? But I need you to be with me. And when I say that is we really have to hear what the Spirit is saying because it is a tough one. We have to be willing to wrestle with it. If we're not, well, enjoy your next 10 minutes of snooze, I guess. Okay. I want to back up just a little bit. Jesus is setting out on a journey. Anybody want to guess where he's journeying to? Jerusalem. That ought to set the scene right there. And a man runs up, kneels before him, and says, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Excellent question. <laughs> right? Great question. You have to wonder how deep this guy was really wanting to go. Because it also would think, oh, this is a simple question. Just tell me the program. Tell me the thing I can do. Check. All good to go. Got eternal life. I'm set. And that's not what Jesus says, is it? First, Jesus says, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. Now, if we were paying attention, we know that Jesus did not quote all ten commandments. He left out the first four. The first four commandments are all about God and our relationship with God, right? God is God alone. Worship no other but God. Have no other idols, Keep Sabbath holy. Do not blaspheme God's name. All of those are about our relationship with God. But Jesus doesn't actually spell them out, but he begins to point at them throughout this conversation and dialogue here. God alone is good. So Jesus takes the focus off himself, points it back to the Father. Then if we're careful, we notice he says, you know the commandments, and he begins to list them. What's wrong with the commandments as they are listed? Go ahead, cheat, look in your paper. Okay, they're backwards. They're absolutely backwards. If you were really reading this out of Deuteronomy, you would know that the first of the human relationship is honor your father and mother so it will be well with you which is also not here. 
but it's important that we know that. But he doesn't start there, does he? He starts with, you shall not murder. Well, that ought to be an easy one to tick off the box, <laughs> right? Most of us in here are thinking, I'm not a murderer, I'm okay, done. But what about you shall not commit adultery? If you were paying attention last Sunday's scripture, adultery is just looking at another person with lust. I'm in trouble because I think Vin Diesel is just the cat's meow. <laughs> okay? Confession right there. Adultery, technically. No? We're okay, though. We're, we're okay. I promise. All right. You shall not steal. Well, I've never stolen, but I did borrow without asking first. I'm, I'm just saying. You shall not bear false witness. I never meant to tell a lie. I just kind of omitted the whole truth. You shall not defraud. And again, honor your father and mother so it may be well with you. And all of us would have to admit that we didn't always honor our parents probably as well as we should have, particularly in those years called adolescence. I mean, if we stop and begin to truly reflect on all of these, even thou shalt not murder, we've all broken it. Because Jesus says, if you hate your brother or sister, you've already committed murder. But, <clears throat> hopefully, we can do that. We can hear them and reflect and begin to acknowledge, eh, we've tried to keep them, but maybe not so perfectly. But this young man really didn't stop to contemplate. He's like, I've kept all those since my youth. Jesus looks at him and loves him. He doesn't scold him. He doesn't stop to list all the time he's broke the commandments because Jesus would know. He loves him for who he is and where he is in his faith journey right there that day. That's what God does. Praise be to God. But he does tell him the truth. You lack one thing. Go sell what you own and give the money to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. I want to stop right there. What Jesus was getting at, he was getting at what was in the way of that individual's relationship with God and with people, his possessions. He didn't possess things, they possessed him. Please do not hear me preaching this morning that all of us need to become paupers in order that others may become wealthy. That's not what Jesus is trying to teach. However, there's always a but. But Jesus does want us to understand one important thing of this. We are all managers. None of us own anything. So yeah, this is a stewardship sermon. If you remember the concept of steward, think of, um, oh, what was... a. Downton Abbey, right? Mr. Right, that's another one. So there's a steward in the house. He doesn't own the house. He doesn't own anything in the house. What does he do? He manages the house and all the staff and everything about it, right? The day in, day out kind of stuff. You and I are that of all that the God of all creation has given us. We are managers. We are managers of our lives. That includes our relationships. 
all the people that God has lovingly gifted into our lives, the people that we know dearly and lovingly, and the people that we meet, I don't know, maybe once in the checkout line. But every person that we come in being with, that's a, that's a relationship, and God's put it there for a reason. And we're to manage it well. Our households, all our goods and possessions and whatever else is there, we're managers. We don't own it. And how do you know you don't own it? Because you can't take it with you. You got to leave it behind, people. You don't own it. You're managers. And we're called to be good managers. Our finances, our own health, and the way we take care of our bodies and our minds and our souls. You see where we're going. So anything that's in our lives that possesses us, and it ain't the Holy Spirit, we need to let it go. And only you and God can figure out what that is. And it's different things at different times, I think, in our lives. It might be our wealth, our possessions, things. It might be our parents or our children. Yep. Because there wasn't a thing I could do to control anything on Thursday in the hospital but sit and pray. That was my job. Sit and pray. Everything was out of my hands, wasn't it? But praise God, my daughter was in God's hands. In, in hands, good hands, medical hands, for the people God had gifted to do all that. That's, that's what Jesus is calling us to, to be managers and to let go of anything that gets in our way, first with our relationship with God and secondly in relationship to others. Because if this isn't right, this can't be right. Because if our heart is not right with God, then we can't even begin to love ourselves. And if we can't love ourselves, can't love our neighbor. Well, Peter's listening to all of this, and Peter, as Peter does, gets upset. Look, we left everything to follow you. We left dad in the boats, men in the nets. We left our wives and our children and my sick mother-in-law behind. I left it all for you, Jesus. What do we get out of this? You're telling me I really got to lose it all? That's not what he said, is it? Because if that was the case, everybody would be called to live in poverty. That's not God's kingdom. God lives all to be okay and in equality together. God doesn't want anyone to be impoverished. And Jesus says, I know you've left your house, your family, your fields, or in Peter's case, his boats. Anyone who leaves all of that for my sake, for the sake of the gospel, this morning it says good news, same thing. You will receive in this age, that means today, in life, you will receive houses, brothers, sisters, mother, children, fields. You're going to receive it all with persecution, with suffering, with some heartache, with some tough times. Jesus didn't promise, not only do you get it all, but you also get the bonus of rose-colored glasses. No. Jesus was being real. You get in this age what this age can give. <laughs> but who are these houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, and children? I mean, I'll be honest. I got a mother. I love her dearly. I don't want another one. One is enough for me to handle. <laughs> I don't think that's what Jesus meant, is that you would gain many mothers, but yet it is. Think about all the women in my life who have mentored me, 
in my 48 years. I bet you can think of some men and women in your lives who fit that description. All the children that you've had opportunity to raise in the faith, as well as in our own homes or in our children's homes. Jesus was telling us that as we are ministers for him and the gospel, we begin to become managers not just of our own. We begin to be managers or stewards of everything and with everyone. Because we are called to be stewards of all creation, aren't we? But in this life, there are hard things. Persecutions, if you will. And the other thing, the other promise that's with it, and in the age to come, you will receive eternal life. The absolute promise and guarantee of God. But many who are first will be last. The last will be first. And I have come to understand that I am one of the first. I should be last. If I am truly a missioner for the gospel, I am willing to be last so that others might be first. No, I don't think of myself as some wealthy, rich woman by any probably American standard. But by the world standard, I am one of the wealthiest beings on the planet. When more than two-thirds of the world's population live in utter poverty, I am King Solomon. And I have to remember that. I have to remember that I might be called to give a little more because I got a lot more to give. And sometimes God lays it on our heart and we need to be faithful about it. We need to be willing to sometimes be last so that others, others can be first. As I said, tough gospel. Not always what we want to hear Jesus say. But Jesus calls us to live in kingdom now. And God's kingdom is justice, equality, mercy, compassion, family upholding one another at all times. That's not what the world can give, but it's what we're called to give. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Sometimes the troubles of the world seem impossible to address, and the burdens of our lives seem too much for us to bear. Yet we trust that for God, all things are possible, and God alone can save us. Therefore, we are bold to pray, saying, God of mercy, be gracious to us. We pray for peace among the nations, food for the hungry, justice for the poor, and the dignity of all people. We pray for Joseph, our president, Ron, our governor, and for those in the military, Miguel, Charles, Travis, Mike, Dennis, and Matt. God of mercy, we pray for new life in the church, fresh energy in mission, faithfulness in ministry, and reconciliation in the body of Christ. We pray for Carla, Richard, Dick, and Lisa, and for Michael and Dabney. In our diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for Holy Spirit Osprey, Holy Spirit Safety Harbor, Church of the Nativity Sarasota, Church of the Redeemer Sarasota, Grace Church Tampa, clergy spouses and widows in the Diocese of Southwest Florida. And we pray also for our Bishop Coadjutor Search Committee and our diocesan convention to be held this Saturday. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of West Africa. God of mercy, be gracious to us. We pray for the welfare of this community, safe streets and homes, good schools and jobs, and the spirit of love among neighbors. We pray for our outreach ministries, Crafters for Hope, Sure, St. Wilfred's Food Pantry, and Ashton Elementary School. God of mercy, be gracious to us. We pray for the healing of all who suffer, comfort for the afflicted, hope for the despairing, and strength for those who care for them. We pray especially for Emily, Chrissy, Anne, Jackie, Jan, Kimberly, Karen, Ron, Natasha, Myra, Zeke, Elizabeth, Al, Carol, Dick, Sarome, Shirley, Travis, Pam, Ed and Edie, Bobby, Heather, Edmund, Kristen, and Stuart. And for Jean, Claudia, Chris, Jamie, Crystal, Linda, and Melanie. God of mercy. O oh God, in whom all things are possible, we commend these prayers to you and commit our lives to seek your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us continue with growing in our spirit prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, be present with us as we consider the renewal and mission of our congregation. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory. Guide us by your Holy Spirit to perceive what is right and grant us both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful Lord, we confess that we have Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Welcome everyone. Want to invite you, if you're able, please stay for a few minutes, grab a cup of coffee. We've got homemade banana bread um, and I think some other goodies down there. So 
love for you to stay. Um, 9 a.m. this morning, we had our second of the Episcopal 101 classes. And remember, that's open to everybody. Um, especially, though, if you are wanting to be confirmed on December 12th when the bishop comes, you want to be received. That means you're not an Episcopalian, but you want to become an Episcopalian. Um, or you want to reaffirm your faith. So those are three options to do. That's one reason to take the class. The other is because... Well, one, we just have a great time learning about who we are in the Episcopal Church. And I never know what question someone's going to bring. I mean, it's amazing. And that leads to more and better discussion. We can never learn too much. So um, the class really is open for everyone. But if you are intending to be in front of the bishop on December 12th, you need to be coming to class. Okay? Um, Today at 3 o'clock is the uh, next Peacemakers event. Um, it will be in person, and there will be Zoom opportunity. And we will be able to hear the Zoomers speaking to us and the in-personers speaking back. So it will be very interconnected. We would love to have you come. If you are coming, you need to let me know. Whether you're Zooming or in person, I have to register you. Um, it's not a big deal. I just need to know. So um, today, the panel of clergy will be there, myself and, and my five friends. But the questions today within our small groups and on the Zoom in small groups, two questions. And the first question is, why do we need to be doing this? Why do we have to do this hard work of talking about systemic racism still in 2021, right? The second question goes even deeper, and probably is a little more harder, and it's when have you experienced the church being complicit in systemic racism? So those are the two questions we're wrestling with today. It's hard work. I know that. And to do the hard work, you have to be willing to be a little vulnerable. But it is really important work for ourselves and for our broader community of Sarasota. So, again, all are invited. Just let me know you want to come with me. It's being held at First Congregational UCC, right off of Euclid, right behind what used to be the y YMCA. It's now... Core. Yeah, core. But anyway, right there. Um, Deacon Lisa mentioned it. Saturday, well, this weekend, really, is Diocesan Convention. This is not the convention when we're electing a new bishop. That happens in April next year, so don't panic. We're not there yet. <laughs> in fact, this Friday will be the last day they're taking names for nominations for that election of the bishop. So can't, can't vote on that now. Um, this is regular diocesan convention. Uh, Friday night is the worship of convention. It's being held at Church of the Redeemer, 5 o'clock. All are invited. You must wear a mask, but I do want to warn you, there's no real social distancing. The, the house will be packed, I'm fairly certain. So just so you know, and you know your comfort level. Um, but all may come. Uh, that's wonderful. Saturday convention is like last year. We're doing it via Zoom. So the delegates and Deacon Lisa will be here as the congregation for St. Margaret of Scotland. I'll get where I'm going to be in a minute. So please keep in your prayers Deacon Lisa, Susan Thomas, Penny Durham, and Marla Ryder. Those are your delegates and one of your clergy. I will not be with them because I, I have to be at day spring with the bishop. As president of the standing committee, if we were in regular convention, I would be up at the head table with the bishop and the chancellor and all those important other people. All of those people have to be together as presiding over the convention. So that means I, with all of them, have to be at day spring. So I ask your special prayers for that. I have done that in the Diocese of Milwaukee before, but we do it a little different here. So and this is my first time. So I'm a little nervous. Um, I know it'll be fine, but I'll be honest with you. I'm a little nervous. So hold us all in prayer, if you will. Um, also, immediately following that wonderful convention, Deacon Lisa leaves for vacation. Yay! 
She and Mike are escaping to the mountains, uh, the Appalachians. So um, keep them in prayer for their travel, uh, but we won't see her again until the last Sunday of October, because she'll, she'll be away the next two weeks. From now. So blessings for your travel. Um, am I forgetting anything? I'm good, right? Okay, all right. Walk in love as Christ loved us, gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy name is kingdom. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. 
Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
as Wendy's coming over, I just want to say a quick thank you for that card. Uh, what a special surprise. <laughs> Much appreciated. So let's pray with Wendy as she goes out today to our people at home. In the name of this congregation, we send you out bearing these gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread and one cup. If you're able to stand, will you stand with me as we pray together? Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Professional Melinda, could everybody put their glasses back on so we can get a quick picture? <laughs> I gotta put something in the slideshow next year. <laughs> everybody got their glasses on? Look at Wendy. Look at Wendy. Look at Wendy. Wendy, but come on, she gotta put yours on too. Wait, wait, wait.